This one's going to be a doozy. Let's start at the beginning. About two months ago, I got the idea to try to make a new single player challenge for myself that also relates to me personally. As some of you know, I am Lebanese. No, not a lesbian, Lebanese. It's a small Middle Eastern country, a beautiful Mediterranean landscape with great food and culture. But right now, going through immense economic strife, corruption, and non-stop issues and crises. Anyway, in the game of Europa Universalis, the game that I play the most on this channel, there is a releasable tag inside the Mamluks that shares my home country's name. So I made the challenge just for myself. As Mamluks release and play as Lebanon without ruining Mamluks or touching anything before releasing. I must play on very hard difficulty, I cannot form any new nations, and I must conquer the entire world. Lebanon doesn't really have the best ideas for world conquest, but they did just fine. How did it go so far? Well, here's a quick recap. Initially, I needed to restart a couple times, but eventually I was able to get my independence with the help of Ottomans. Then, while going through our first bankruptcy, Mamluks attacked us, calling in Ottomans on our side for free. We then went on a gold hunt in Africa while snaking the Persia trade node, leading us to fight a coalition war and take our second bankruptcy. We then betrayed the Ottomans, conquered all of India using vassals, changed our religion to Coptic, started making serious money, and they got a personal union over Russia. <sighs> Sigh. And that brings us to where we last left off. If you want to watch part 1 and part 2 of this series, you can hit that eye icon in the top right of the screen. Now, in the game, we needed to quickly finish off Asia and move on to Europe. The reason why we don't go into Europe until we're done with all the other regions is because on very hard, the, the AI will build lots and lots of units, which means that we can still get a coalition despite having almost 2k troops. Any coalition would slow us down way too much and we were already running out of time. To get loans, it's time to build the Suez Canal. This is gonna be very useful for us. Things were going a lot slower than I wanted them, mainly due to our zero admin monarch. Yes, a monarch with zero admin skill, meaning that we were taking land faster than we could core it. Luckily, I had a trick under my sleeve that was recommended to me by a certain someone. We'll get more to that later. King's mandate still is now lowering. Nomadic frontier, unguarded nomadic frontier. Who Who is the unguarded nomadic frontier here? Manchu? He's still going to be very hard to crumble though, because this is very hard difficulty and he's passed all the reforms. We'll see. We're almost at 300 overextension, jeez. We need to keep all of the pop-ups that come open, because they can start spawning at insane rates at this overextension. Swar vs Ming was a huge success, and we snaked out all of their high-value provinces in order to hurt their economy. Even with a lot of troops and a lot of boats, fighting in this region is actually so painful. That moment when 150k peasants spawn in your capital. Manchu was next on the chopping block, he was isolated, weak, and Russia did all of the work. I'm not even sure what I did to get such horrible RNG. With the Suez now completed, we can freely go between the Mediterranean and the Red Sea, connecting all of our navies and not having two different navies in two different spots. Border gore warning, we are about to snake nations in very unnatural ways. I'd say our capital is pretty large. Remember that trick I had under my sleeve? Well, it's time to use it. Basically, there is a way in the late game to guarantee a very, very good ruler. I'm not going to reveal the secret entirely, but later in this video, I do explain how this works. Well, this is really bad. The Southeast Asia brawl continued, but while that was happening, we got a really horrible modifier that we can't get rid of unless we declared on France. So we declared war on France. The French morale was incredibly high. We outnumbered them almost 7 to 1, making this war not too difficult. I snaked France pretty hard here, but this was actually a kind of a mistake. I took way too much aggressive expansion for this, and that required me to constantly have the entire world on a true cycle, or I would get coalition. I made two Chinese client states so I did not have to core directly, leaving us to core Europe directly. Now we were fighting both in Europe and Asia at the same time, 
and if I did it any other way, I would get coalition. This was actually super scary because I could have just ruined the run right here just because I took too much land from France. Another disgusting snake, but if we kept our truces going, we won't get a coalition. AE did not matter. Please don't hate me for snaking. It's, it's just necessary to do. Unfortunately, we no longer could rely on just eating the colonizers to get the New World stuff, as both Florida and Canada got their independence, meaning we had to declare war and conquer them separately. You could start seeing it come together in the player map mode, but we were still running short on time. The war with Canada won, we created two new colonies, New Lebanon and Lebanese Canada. To make truces shorter, we called in um, nations like Ming through basically allies or tributaries, then white piece them, turning a 15 year truce into a 5 year truce. I listened to you guys' advice and I got an auto clicker. My fingers and tendons thank you greatly. Now that we controlled these nodes almost 100% and all of them, it was time to move the trade and make it move to as many nodes as possible, stacking as much trade steering as possible, making us really, really rich. It was time to end the Japanese shogunate, and with it, also end the way of the samurai. Except they had guns, just, I guess, slightly worse guns than ours. Another nation falls. I lost like three years of footage here, but basically we fought against a bankrupt France and a bankrupt Ming, taking more land. Overextension is just a number. Alright, I give you permission to flame me on this one. We reset the Ming truce again by attacking Ryuku. Thanks, Russian Navy. Ten Mings later and China's still not exploding. Here comes the island hopping just to deal with rebels. To avoid collisions, I built a lot of units. Shan Yu. One more war to finish off Japan. Now it was time to start eating into Spain. They looked really scary because they had almost all of the New World, but in terms of development, they had less than 1,800 total. The Mediterranean was swarming with boats. By the way, naval guide coming soon. It wasn't long into the war until Spain ran out of manpower. I was so rich at this point that this event gave me 42,000 ducats. I think the Hawaiians want their independence. At this point, I think I'm just playing Victoria too. Did you know 67% of you are not subscribed? Hit that subscribe button and at 50k subscribers, I will do a sus world conquest at very hard difficulty. Still collecting bad events, just put them here in the corner. 300 over extension, but only minus one unrest. I've expanded so fast that I've doubled my development since the beginning of the video. Not sure how this happened. What? With the no coring range age bonus, the border gore only gets worse. But hey, at least there's a new emperor of the HRE. White piece with Spain to reset the truce. You guys were really right about the auto clicker. Our last war against Ming. At this point of the campaign, we were between 300 to 400 overextension constantly. And that meant that even if we were rooting corruption to the max, we still gained corruption. That's totally fine though at this point. Now that Granada is finally cored, we're going to upgrade it to the final level immediately so we can get that additional 5% admin efficiency. You stack that on top of the admin efficiency we get from tech, absolutism, and all the core creation costs that we have, and we can start eating a lot of land. I think at this point we were eating about 500 to 520 development Per war. For our last two idea groups, we went plutocratic and offensive. We really needed troop quality as um, that was our biggest lacking thing. Our troop quality was absolutely horrid.
We were still winning wars really fast. As a matter of fact, there got to a point here where we were winning so much, but we couldn't finish the wars because we were still coring stuff. We even reached 500 over extension. But it was not enough. We still needed to eat more land. Time was running out. Even I wasn't sure if we were still going to make it. We ate more of France. We finished off the Ming. I even made a new client state to reduce the overextension. I fought Spain again. I then used my secret list to give myself another really good ruler. Wait, let me explain it now. All right, so you may already know this. This is just an example right here. If you have general estates and you click states general, then you hit general estates, you will get a new ruler. Uh, this new ruler, however, though, is not random. So just to demonstrate, I'm going to do it again. It's going to be a 425. See, if you do this again, the same test at home on 17 November 1444, you also will get a 425. Basically, the ruler that you get when you do this interaction is not based off of a random number generator. It's based off of the date. Someone out there went through every single date of EU4 and put it on an Excel sheet showing what date it, you will get a 666 or a 566 or a 656, something really high. The person who made the Excel document doesn't want me to share the exact Excel document, but now that you know this, you can essentially figure out the dates on your own. The man who made the list is Russian, and he may or may not have threatened my life if I do share the exact Excel document. Now back to the video. We fought in the mountains. We fought in the sea. We fought in the crash reporter. We upgraded every monument to max level because I, I just had a lot of money. I got an achievement because of it. We fought against the rebels. Wait, Jerusalemite separatists? This is Indonesia. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? But it was time to land on the British Isles. It doesn't matter if they have 300 heavy ships. We saved our grand fleet mission just for this moment. And in that moment, Lebanon ruled the waves just like their Phoenician ancestors. France's new capital is in Africa, making me think that we've now transitioned from Vic 2 to Hoi 4. We killed the little Staten Emperor and now Bohemia is the Emperor of the HRE. A reminder that the Emperor is always called in as a co-belligerent. Even though it's going to cost us a lot of dip points that we really don't care about, we can fully annex Bohemia here. The Empire's last hold. I wish I could watch this battle, but there's just so many pop-ups. Doink, all of Bohemia's land goes to us, meaning there will be now a new emperor in the HRE. And we are hoping, hoping that it is Great Britain, and it's Great Britain. Which is amazing, because now we can eat Great Britain by declaring war on a miner in the HRE. Oh no, here comes the Lebanese revolution! Now it's time to finish off the British. Wait, I just realized what that's right here. Just put the Minecraft eating sound effect. The run's over, guys. A couple of Spain's colonies declared independence. 
There's no way that I have time to eat them. Just kidding, boys. The loyalist Spanish side won the war. The run is back on. Oh, well, look at that. Great Britain will defend Mecklenburg? Oh, no. Oh, I guess we have to fight the British again. Goodbye, Bryn. I won't miss you. Ah, yes. Lebanese English Columbia. One more war against Spain, and we can fully annex them. But then the rebels spawned. And they spawned everywhere. Literally everywhere. And with war on the Palatinate declared, we were at war with almost, almost everyone. They tried to defend against us. They sent all of their troops. But it was futile. For, for Lebanon, Lebanon would, would conquer, conquer them, them all. all. All that was left was Spain, but time was running short. With 10 months left in the game, we got a 100 war score against Spain, which means we can fully annex them. I spent 30 minutes looking for Spain's last province so I could fully annex them, and I found it all the way up here in Canada. It was a province that they were colonizing. And that's it. Lebanese world conquest completed. It's not a one tag. I made really ugly client states. I'm not the best with client states. I just used them whenever I needed. Uh, to go over 500 over extension and um, I was trying to annex Russia I was trying to annex them for the last 40 years but I was negative on diplo points for so long that I could never annex them here's our final tech finished admin and military still behind in diplo here's the religious map mode it looks horrible but that's because I was converting whatever was the cheapest and I TC'd a lot of things especially in India Culture map mode is almost like vanilla. Anything that was done was by the AI. I didn't do any culture conver converting at all in this campaign. Here are my final subjects. All my new world guys are just completely pissed off with me for some reason. And to finish off the video, here is the time lapse. It's bugged because we started as a releasable tag on the first date. So it shows our first two provinces as Mamlukian provinces, even though they're not. But um, you can really see, if you pay attention, you can really see the different bumps uh, in admin efficiency that I got throughout the campaign. Of course, in this part, there still was no admin efficiency. But here, this is where absolutism gets put in. And then, of course, the techs get put in. And all other bonuses get in. Uh, military hegemon, of course, because of the war, pro uh, uh, war, co uh, war score cost of provinces. Um, and then... Um, Finally, uh, this is where we also got the PU on Russia and then here is where we just go crazy You know constantly over 300 400 over extension just completely madman mode 500 almost 600 over extension and boom World conquest completed And I have to say this was a hundred percent the hardest world conquest that I've ever done Mostly because it was on the very hard difficulty and I've only done world conquest on normal but just the tag not getting any core cost bonuses besides from religion was made it really, really hard. Anyways, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you watched the entire series, I hope you enjoyed the entire series. Maybe you laughed, maybe you learned something, maybe a bit of both. Um, and I'm really happy about that. Check, check out my Twitch if you get the chance. Check out my Twitch. I'm live on there pretty often. I play a bunch of different games on there. And um, yeah, uh, subscribe 50k subs. I will do another very hard world conquest as the nation of Zeus. So um, with that being said, that's all I got. I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.